So I wanted to ask you a little bit about some of the challenges that the Global Fund has had. Several years ago, you faced some challenges. You made some reforms to sort of restore donor confidence. Can you reflect a little bit on some of those challenges and, and what you've learned through that process, how that informs where the Global Fund goes yeah. from here? I think it's a great question uh, because, you know, crises offer opportunity. And, you know, we were created in a very unique way in a very exciting time uh, around the time of the Millennium Development Goals and a new way of approaching development, moving past donors and recipients to real partnership. Uh, the Monterey Consensus and the Paris Declaration, Accra Accord, Busan, really focused on basic principles, countries owned and shared responsibility, that this was not about donors and recipients, it's a shared responsibility, results-based approach, getting outcomes, not just putting money in, which is how we measured things before, how much money we put in. Now we wanted to measure what, what happens with that money. Good governance, people jump to corruption, but it's not just corruption, it's actually how you use money best, and all sectors being involved. And we were created to respond to that exciting moment in development. We didn't fully fulfill that. And one of the symptoms of it was not the best financial management, um, but it was deeper than that. We hadn't really fulfilled the partnership approach to support countries to achieve objectives and move along that development continuum. So it was a great moment to be able to look and self-reflect and our board did a remarkable thing and looked at it in that way and said, how do we change our fundamental operating models? So we basically redone everything. I mean, everything we do in, from our internal systems to how we work with countries has been redone, but it's actually getting back to the original principles, pushing us back towards those founding principles. Uh, and that's pretty exciting because I think we're on the track now, we'll see how it goes, of reaching those objectives, of really changing how we, are, how we act with our development partners, but how we come together to support a country. Yeah. And, and then I know that an, another, you know, replenishment, another funding cycle will come up. What, you know, the donor environment is changing. The way aid is funded is changing from concessional loans to private sector engagement. Um, are you concerned about this next replenishment? Or are you, you know, perhaps, you know, buoyed by Gavi's recent replenishment, which was quite successful? It's a great success. Gavi's replenishment, I think, was a wonderful signal to everyone that the notion that, you know, money is drying up isn't quite accurate. So then it gets back to what are we doing? You know, strategically, what are we doing? And we're in the strategy development, and that's the exciting part to me, because that will drive how you do it replenishment, but more importantly, who we are as an organization and how we evolve to respond to change. And it gets back to that development continuum. How do you invest in a, collectively in a challenging operating environment through the process of a self-sustaining state, which is not unidirectional, countries go back and forth, you know, they make progress and then there's setbacks. And what are the component pieces? Health systems is certainly one of them, programmatic, getting into the community. But then also the financing. How does a country finance itself and move along that continuum? What are the innovative finance tools? In some countries, Senegal, Kenya, remarkably innovative stuff. How they're financing their health programs is remarkable. So much more innovative than the stuff we come up with at our little headquarters meetings. You know, they're looking at carbon tax credits to fund health, really exciting stuff. So how do we support countries to achieve their objectives over time for health, but for development more broadly? And that's pretty exciting. And as long as you, and we would anticipate over the long haul, external resources will be going down as internal resources go up. And, you know, the type of programming we're doing today in 15 years will be a very small set of countries. So then how and do we have a role? Do international organizations have a role? Do we switch to global public goods and technical in a way that's different? We're working on some of that, creating an online procurement mechanism like kayak or priceline.com. That's pretty exciting. That's a global public good countries can use well after they transition from the global fund if we get it right. What's a global public good around supply chain? You know, what are, how do you manage a supply chain? Around financial and risk management, how, what are some pull down things countries can use? Best practices and quality assurance. So this is the exciting thing. You know, what is the role of an international organization in six, 10, 15 years?